why has the packaging industry in recent times come under the spotlight? What do you think has been a turning point? I think, I think that there's been a, a, a significant shift in awareness from the consumer about the environmental impact that plastic packaging has in the world today. And, uh, and consumers are demanding less plastic, and uh, we are happy to be able to provide a solution for that. What's this exciting step ahead that I've heard with you got actually in each state now you have that? Composting service, yeah. Composting so service. We offer a compost collection program for uh, our customers. Uh, cafes can sign up to the, to the program, and uh, we provide them with a compost bin which they can dispose of all their food scraps generated by the business along with any of the packaging, and it all get turned into nutrient-rich compost and return to the land. For people, and for me, for example, without a huge amount of knowledge on the recycling crisis at hand, when has that started, why has it started, and where is it going? Okay, so it started, I think it was about a year ago, uh, China uh, um, announced a ban on taking mixed waste, uh, mixed recyclables, from a whole lot of countries, it wasn't just Australia. And I guess up until then, it was really easy for countries like Australia to you know, ship that problem offshore. But the problem is that in the early days of recycling, the material streams were relatively clean. You know, it, was, it was glass, predominantly, and metal. And there was no problem with recycling those materials. But as plastics have sort of you know, evolved and become more mainstream in the use of packaging, um, these different types of plastic materials, along with a whole lot of contaminants, were all packaged together and shipped offshore. So China had this major issue where there, there, there were this huge amount of, of waste coming to the country and a lot of stuff was done sort of in, in sort of your backyards where they could extract their valuable resources and then just trash whatever was remaining. So it caused a huge environmental catastrophe for China. And eventually they said, we can no longer accept these, these coming waste. It had to be 99.5% pure if they wanted to take it. So suddenly the world is scrambling and the recycling industry is saying, let's invest in technology to get that purity. Let's re-educate consumers on correct disposal options, let's see what's contaminating the stream and get that all out and then we can utilize these materials again. Yeah. Organic waste represents about 7 million tons of waste that we currently send to landfill in mm -hmm. Australia. There's a huge portion of waste and there's definitely a need for infrastructure to, I guess, deal with that waste stream because when organic waste ends up in a landfill, it uh, biodegrades and releases methane gas, which is a carbon, which is a, a greenhouse gas, 20 times more potent than carbon dioxide. So there's definitely a need to get that out of the waste stream. What happens is putting to not be putting something that can be used in the system again, to be just putting it into landfill. Correct. It's also having a huge detriment. Correct. So you know the process is really simple. These compost or commercial compost facilities do exist. Uh, as I said, we have one in every state at the moment. And it's a very simple process. The way it differs from your home compost is that the temperatures and conditions are very carefully controlled and monitored to optimize that process. So the process is you know, a high temperature for the first 10 days, um, about 55 to 60 degrees Celsius, and then um, eight to 10 weeks of conventional composting. And by the end, you just left with this really nutrient which uh, soil additive. And at the end of the day, I mean, you know, it's, it's thanks to, to the consumer, to the average you know, man in the street, because you know, I think the number of things happened, obviously it was the China National Sword banning of those, it was a number of documentaries, it was uh, the War and Waste, it was BBC's Blue Planets, all of these sort of came together at the same time just to, you know, to really expose the, the, the scope of the problem. And just recently, the MacArthur Foundation you know, announced uh, a lot of signatories to this new plastics economy. And, and people are coming, or companies are coming out now and actually ex exposing or, or showing how much plastic they actually consume. And once you have the data, then you can sort of make a plan and say, how can we reduce that bar? And it's a, it's a little chicken and egg situation because, as I said before, there's been a lot of innovation happening in the recycling industry. Maybe for too long it's been neglected because it was just too easy to ship that all off to China. But there's, there's you know, so much more happening now. And it's about using the right material for the right application. You know, plastics are a fantastic mm. material. You know, in medical, in, in automotive, you can't beat wow. plastics. Yeah. But do you use plastics for food service disposables? There's probably better materials. And for me, a bioplastic is just one other plastic, which probably is better used for making you know, plant or food service disposables you know, they're not in car parts. But so, again, the right material for the right application. I love that. We're sharing on that. That's perfect. Right material for right application. Thanks. Fantastic. Fantastic.